In the previous activity, you saw that if you want to change the confidence level to 99%, it's going to make your confidence interval wider, and that's because the critical value is getting larger. So let's think about critical values first just based on the empirical rule. So we had picked 2 as our multiplier in the first video because we wanted a 95% confidence level, and we know that if we go out two standard errors, um, we'll be capturing about 95% of the values. The empirical rule also says that if we want to get 99.7% of the values, so if you wanted 99.7% confidence, you would need a critical value of 3. In other words, you would want to add 3 standard errors to each side of the sample statistic. So 99%, that's not accounted for by the empirical rule, um, but we know that it would have to be somewhere between 2 and 3, and we'll see how to calculate to find that value. And then for 90%, we know that would have to be somewhere between 1 and 2, because 1 would be 68% confidence, so 90 would be somewhere between 1 and 2. So to calculate these values that aren't given by the empirical rule, we're going to use the normal distribution calculator. So let's start off with 95%. So we know that it's going to be here somewhere near 2. It turns out it's not exactly 2. So in jump, I'm going to do add-ins, teaching modules, distribution calculator. That'll get me to my normal distribution. And for now, I'm leaving the distribution like it is. So it's a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. But I am going to change the type of calculation. Instead of input values, I'm going to do input probability, and I'm going to change this to central probability. So if I put in the central probability as 0.95, then that's telling me how many standard errors I have to go out to get 95% of the values. The empirical rule tells us that it's about 2, and it is, it's very close to that, um, but a more precise calculation would be 1.96. So the multiplier that we'll use for 95% confidence is 1.96, and the symbol that we use for that critical value is Z star. So Z star is 1.9600. Again, keeping four uh, decimal places just to make sure we get full credit. So let's do the one for 90% now. So I'm going to do 90% in the middle, and I know it has to be somewhere between 1 and 2. Going back to jump, I'm going to change my central probability to 0.9. And here I'm looking at the values again, and it's 1.6449. By the way, notice that this gives a positive and a negative, but it doesn't matter because in our formula we're doing plus or minus the margin of error, so whatever you plugged in wouldn't really make a difference. Usually we just use the positive value for Z star. So for 90% confidence, our critical value is 1.6449. And just to make sure you know how to use the distribution calculator, I'm going to let you calculate the one for 99% confidence. So go ahead, pause the video, and get Z star for 99%. So when you plug in 99% into the jump calculator, you should get a Z star value of 2.5758. So why do we have three different confidence levels? And really, we could have even more than this. We could have confidence levels in between. These are just some common ones. Um, it's because different confidence levels have different pros and cons. So the big advantage of having a higher confidence level is that you're going to be more likely to capture the true parameter. So if you're 99% confident, that means that the formula that you're using to calculate the confidence interval is going to capture the true parameter 99% of the time. So obviously being more sure that you have the real parameter in there, that's an advantage. Um, but it does have a big con, and if we want to think about an extreme example, it's easy to see the cons. So if we wanted to be 100% confident, we could just do an interval all the way from 0 to 1, right? We'd be 100% confident that the true parameter was in there, but that's not useful at all. All proportions are between 0 and 1, so that's not a useful estimate. And this kind of happens in general, that the wider your interval gets, which happens when you have a higher confidence level, the less precise your estimate is, obviously, and that tends to be less useful. So you can be 100% confident, but you have an interval that doesn't help you at all. So it's always kind of a trade-off between wanting to be confident that the parameter is in the interval and having an interval that is small enough to actually be useful.